Hey guys, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you that has been requested for a long time, which is how you can set up bronze, silver, and gold medallion tables within Postgres. Um, and don't worry if you're not using Postgres, the same patterns will apply uh, for really any kind of SQL database. You're just going to need to you know, alter some of the syntax uh, for your specific database. Um, and what I'm using here to run it is just Postgres app for MacBooks. You can download it online, super easy. Um, and then I'm going to be just connecting and running my scripts within dBeaver, um, just local UI for actually running actions within a database. Um, and so what I'm going to actually also want to be using as the data set for this is just the classic taxi uh, vendor data set. You can download it really anywhere online. Just search for taxi vendor data set. It's the most classic um, NYC taxi you know, kind of pattern for running these kind of operations and examples. Um, and so without further ado, let's get into it uh, and start creating our bronze schema. And so the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously just create your schema. Uh, if it doesn't exist, create, you know, bronze um, and then drop any existing bronze table if it already exists and it doesn't already exist. So it's just going to see, you're going to see that error message there at start. Um, and then assuming that that hasn't been created, right? So we just want to create a fresh table uh, of any new data. So any pre-existing data that was already around, don't want it anymore. Um, so now we're going to create this blank table if it doesn't exist. And then on the, we're going to also create an index on the load timestamp uh, for more efficient querying. So instead of just using timestamp to kind of order our data, we want to create an index, make it easier and more organized to actually just query our raw data downstream. Um, so we're not stuck always just having to uh, use that timestamp or not use, time, use um, that raw timestamp as uh, our identifying index and it's also going to help queries run faster as well. Um, then what we'll do um, is insert some sample data into our bronze layer. So this would likely just be something you're going to be doing, you know, either as part of your data ingestion. I'm only doing it here because I don't have any, you know, I just don't want to bother going through the process of uploading the data from an external database, right? So I'm just going to kind of create an example. And this is, again, just data um, that copied over from that taxi trip data set. Um, so you can download and use and, and basically just copy that in yourself as well. Um, and then once we're done with that, we're also going to, you'll notice here, I added some data that does have data quality issues. Um, within the silver layer, we're actually going to clean this data out. So I wanted to show you know, how you clean your data as part of this process. Um, so we have one entry that has a negative fare and then one entry that actually has some invalid coordinates. I just took an entry and adjusted to break it. Um, so then once we have run that insert command, we've got our data loaded up. The next step is going to just be running a quick verify bronze da data layer load. So you know, just making sure every time this script gets run, that our data is of the expected size. And so here we just have a simple select statement. Hey, count uh, all as total records from bronze taxi trips raw, and then just sample uh, the first five rows to make sure the data isn't corrupted. It's of the expected you know, type and look and feel that, that we're anticipating here. Um, so this is our first step. So just creating that bronze table. And so you'll see we'll run this script and now we just have our first kind of five rows of this taxi data within our database, right? So here we go to tables now, we will see our uh, taxi table. So here have taxi trips raw. And then next what we'll do um, is start building our silver table. So here we'll add a new silver, a new script. Um, so new SQL script here, and this will be our silver SQL script. Um, and so next, what we're going to do is within the silver layer, typically you, know, you want to take, hey, we've got our raw data in the ingestion layer. Now we want to clean it, do some validation, standardization, um, so that it is, you know, it's not fully transformed for analytics, but we've gotten, you know, all the bad data. We have it in a really easily transformable uh, format. And so first thing we're going to do here is same thing, just creating the schemas if they don't already exist. So creating silver schema dropping an existing table, um, so taxi trips cleaned. And then what we're going to do here is create a new table um, with all the different fields that we want to track in our silver uh, stage. So here we're just creating a surrogate key, so serial number, trip trip ID um, for easier joins. And this is how, you know, imagine as an ID you'd be using to join with other pieces of data. Um, we also are creating some metadata fields, so timestamp for bronze load, silver load, so we can see the delta between bronze and silver. 
the actual source file, the raw source file, so you can tr for traceability. Um, then just create a nice clean trip, inf trip information with the proper data types, um, location data with precision for GPS coordinates, trip details, um, also starting to calculate things like financial data, um, and then also data quality flags. So this is how we're going to filter bad data downstream to make sure uh, you, know, you don't want to delete bad data, but you want to kind of quarantine it. Um, and then we also have some fields that we're going to calculate like the trip duration in minutes and the trip speed um, in mile per hour as well. So once we've created the table, the next thing we're going to do is also create some index for common query patterns. So these will make it easier to find the data for you know these particular uh, values. So you know for things like hey, pick up date time, the amount of silver tri taxi trips that are you know running at a certain uh, pickup or drop off time, uh, the vendor IDs you can track uh, trips by vendor, um, payment types you can track by payment type, valid trips so you can filter out any invalid trips um, or any invalid data. Um, and let me just create a few empty rows here just so for spacing. Um, and then after we've done, we're done creating the indexes, then we're just going to run a very long insert command to insert all of our different data into this new table we just created. So here we have insert into, go up here into silver taxi trips, all those fields we just created and then selecting from our bronze table, source file, casting the vendor ID, changing the integer types to the proper integer types, changing t uh, cases to make sure that they're uh, capped at, hey, you can't have passengers less than one because you don't have a ride if you don't have a passenger, and you can't have more than six because we don't have, let's say, larger vans in our fleets. So we know that legally you're never allowed to have more than six. Um, and then these are just, again, casting different uh, variables to the correct type. Um, and then same thing here, casting valid coordinates, making sure they're uh, within the New York City approximate bounds. So testing the coordinates for uh, whether they're actually taking place in New York City. Um, also running fare validation, so making sure the fare is actually greater than zero for each, each entry. Duration has to be between one hour and three minutes. You can't have a ride less than a minute and we don't allow rides more than three hours. Obviously you can change that. Uh, then we're also calculating the trip duration in minutes. So just basically here subtracting the uh, drop off time minus the pickup time and just getting a value in numbers or in, you know, in minutes. Um, and then finally calculating the average speed uh, distance over time in mile per hour. Um, so we have some clean data rather than just raw you know, entries and, and makes it easier for obviously querying this all downstream because you don't care about the pickup and drop off time mostly, most likely you care about how long were these trips taking. Um, and then also just doing some basic not null checks to make sure that, hey, drop off is always after pickup. Um, and also there has to be a pickup and a drop off. You obviously can't have one and the other. Um, so once we've done that, we've inserted all our data and done some transformations in the process, we're then also going to perform some data validation or create a data quality table um, to create summaries from data quality, from some data quality checks we'll run on this table. So here we're creating, we're saying, hey, making sure every field has valid coordinates, valid fares, valid durations, um, has val fully valid records. Um, so it has all those, all those things as valid. Um, and then also the quality percentage. So saying, hey, total amount of times when we don't actually have quality rides versus quality rides, so you can get an overall view um, of how well maintained and how well recorded your data is. Um, and then just saving in an external table for easier uh, analysis and validation. It also makes it easier if you know, you're collecting data over time, right? You can have each entry in this table, be the sum data, uh, sum validation of each time you ingested that data. Then what we'll do is just show the data quality report. So just add a select statement here, um, and then also show another sample of our clean data, um, just showing that it is in fact cleaned. Um, and boom, that is our silver stage, all nice and complete. So now it's time to move on to gold. And so here again, we can see some of the output here of our top fields within our now silver table. So has valid coordinates, valid fare, uh, making sure this is all valid data. So cool. Now creating our next and final SQL script, we are then going to create our gold table. So here, let's go, and this is the table that is going to be you know, really tightly designed, business ready aggregations analytics. So we're really taking high level metrics, analytics, um, and doing a lot of calculations here that will be used in downstream business processes and reporting. So first what we'll do is just do our classic, hey, create a schema if it doesn't exist. Uh, so creating that gold table schema. 
then we're going to drop a table, you know, drop it if it doesn't exist and create a new table um, with a select statement. So here, what we'll do is drop table if it doesn't exist, the daily trip summary table, and then create goal daily trip summary as selecting pickup date time from tri as trip date, the total number of trips by counting all the number of trips, um, count distinct vendor IDs as active vendors, so only counting distinct vendors, so deduplicating vendors so you know exactly how many you know drivers you have. Um, also passenger metrics here, so the passenger count for total passengers, average passengers per trip, averaging the total distance, trip duration, uh, trip distance, speed, um, also creating a lot of these average financial metrics like average total fare amount, total tips, total revenue, average trip cost, the max trip cost, uh, tip analysis for tip percentage and average tip, um, and then also data quality metrics, analyzing you know the, at a high level, hey, are a lot of these trips uh, valid? And you're seeing pulling all this data from that silver table and grouping it by date time, ordered by trip date, um, which is again, that index we created at the start. Now then we're, what we're gonna do is create another index um, for date-based queries. So we're here, we're gonna create an index uh, daily date based on daily trip summary. And then we're going to do uh, some analysis on vendor performance metrics. Um, so this is very typical in a gold table. You know, you're gonna wanna perform analysis for these queries. So here, what we're doing is, you know, basically same thing we did up there, dropping vendor performance if it already, doesn't, if it already exists. And then here creating a new table where we're actually assigning our vendors uh, names. So here we have, you know, create a mobile, Verifone, else's other. Um, and we're also, so, you know, making the data a lot cleaner to look at instead of just, you know, vendor IDs, uh, calculating some of these things like volume metrics, the amount of total trips, stays active per vendor, average trips per day per vendor. Um, and, you know, basically all that same kind of average, uh, all those averages we counted at the start, but now broken down per vendor. Um, and that's really a lot of what gold tables are doing. It's taking the same information, but slicing it in different ways that analysts might use, right? So understanding, hey, what, you know, vendors are using more cash versus credit card or what vendors are getting the most tips, um, understanding all of these processes. Um, and then another one, it could be something like payment type analysis. So let's say you wanna understand, you know, what type of payments people are using and how that has input, you know, affects the number of trips or the tips you're getting, right? So here we have credit card, cash, no charge or dispute. Um, and here what we can do is start tracking, hey, people that are paying cash, what's their average trip distance? What's their total revenue? Um, and tip analysis, I'd say is most relevant here for credit versus cash is saying, hey, how much do I normally get tipped when people pay with cash versus credit? And then maybe, you know, you want to say, hey, I want to actually only, uh, you know, accept cash or credit if I expect, if one is giving vastly larger tips um, than the other, right? And so I could get, really go on for, for days with all the different types of analysis you could do here, um, but I'll cap it off as, you know, another one for, hey, um, trip distance duration. So here, you know, let's say I want to, or, you know, analyze, hey, what is the hourly demand patterns, right? So here, you know, if I wanna look at what is, you know, I wanna say, hey, more people need to be on the road at a certain time, understanding hour by hour, when are people most likely to, you know, create, to schedule rides, to book rides, um, and you, you can amp, group them in these different periods and then analyze, you know, schedule your drivers accordingly so you don't have extra drivers on the road just sitting idle um, when you could be having them sit home. Um, and then also, you know, something like a trip distance duration is also a great one to have. So just, you know, really simple, hey, understanding different categories of trip distances. So if you want to analyze cost and tips on that as well, you can. Um, and then another very common thing to do after you've, you know, created your tables is also create views, right? And so these are basically, you know, windows within SQL that you can use to say, hey, this is an executive dashboard that's going to sum up today's metrics, um, the amount of trips today, revenue today, trips yesterday, revenue yesterday to compare, um, week to date, month to date. Uh, and this is, you know, really a executive level view ready to be sent out to an external party where it just has only the relevant information that's gone through these series of cleaning, validation, calculation to arrive at these actual data points. And that's, the, again, the purpose of a gold table. Um, and then similarly, you create something like a data quality monitor, right? Where here, we're creating a monitor where we're selecting, you know, hey, bronze layer validation, silver layer validation, gold layer validation, having all their data quality percentages at, added there so you can actually see, hey, these are, you know, this is how data is evolving and being cleaned and changing as it flows through our systems. Um, 
and that is really everything I have for you today. You know, I wanted to make this video. Um, I thought it was something that been getting requested enough that I finally had to get around to it. Um, so it took some time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Day guy out.